Hello guys, welcome to Electronics. So in today's episode, let's take a look at this high low voltage cutout that is made for IFB devices. Now don't get confused by the branding IFB in up front right here. That is because this thing is not manufactured by IFB. This thing is designed by another company and is supposed to be used with IFB home appliances. Like for example, this particular model is used with IFB washing machines and as you can see, it is a high low voltage cutoff. Let's take a look at the specifications for this thing and you can see the operating voltage is around 0 to 440 volts AC at 50 Hz, max current 16 amps. So, and I'm really thinking that this cable can handle it's really thick cable and looking at the pin size, you can see it's really, that is really dirt up here because this thing was lying in my attic without any getting any attention so this plug is rated for 16 amps the wires are rated for 16 amps so that's fine and even the plug here this is the protected kind of plug you can see the protection things inside it will come into action only if a plug is inserted if a proper plug is inserted right there so it's protected and it can support up to six seconds and there's a time delay so when this thing is plugged in like this when this is plugged in it will take around 5 seconds for the output to get activated so and this this is the this is being marketed by IFB and ma uh, manufactured by that company right there the manufacturing date has been tampered and that sticker has also been gone long gone this is screen this everything is you know old so enough of talking let's open it so it has some weight to it you can kind of see that it, it is biasing towards this side so for turning this a device of 16 amps so it's going to need some serious relay and so i think that's the reason why it's having some offset towards that point so basically what this thing is it detects it kind of acts like a stabilizer but instead of a stabilizing action it just turns everything off you know in a stabilizer you are actually having a transformer, an auto transformer with a separate winding. So based on the input voltage conditions, the screw is not coming out easily. So based on the voltage condition, the sense circuit will trigger the appropriate winding on the transformer and it will keep, it will help the transformer to keep the output voltage stable at 230, 220 volts like that. But instead in this one, it's just a cutoff so it it will trip if the voltage if the input voltage is about 170 volts there by protecting the device and it will it claims that it will do it within 20 milliseconds and low voltage if the voltage was below 170 volts it will again trip there by protecting the device from loading the thing so i'm going to open it up and that's what's inside of it let me get the wire away from here okay now it's much more easy so that's how the internals look like and this is why it is biased towards this side. It has some serious weight to it to this side because of this transformer and it's saying 4.4 volts and 12.2 volts I'm guessing because I can see a lot of diodes over here so most probably these are going to be rectified and I can pretty much confirm that this 12 volts will be for the a relay and let's take a look at the relay here for a moment it's made by what that company is i don't know what what weird phones they were using like is it l e o n e i don't know and it is that model 12 volts and it is rated for around normally open 30 amps normally flows 20 amps but i don't know maybe this will be a good being a product that is marketed by a well manufacturer you know well established manufacturer like ifb they may actually scrutinize this thing before and uh, before being uh, taking the responsibility for distributing this thing so i guess this thing will pass if this thing has passed their qualifications their standard uh, criteria, then yeah this thing can certainly handle 16 amps of current and let's take a look at the wiring there is nothing much into it the earth pin goes straight to the earth the ground pin goes straight to the ground and also a terminal is coming from there to here and the live wire goes straight 
to that point and there is another wire going to that plug that is the only wire that is going to the live plug so I'm guessing this relay is just turning the uh, making contact between these two wires that is the only thing that relay does I'm not seeing any other kind of sensing technique like how are they sensing the voltage since they're not dealing with since they're not using any kind of AC direct measurements okay hold on a second okay before that let me just take out everything because there should be some kind of IC there has to be some kind of comparator otherwise they are not going to get it oops there it goes they are not going to get it done without an IC of some sort so I'm guessing it is underneath it has to be a multi-side multi-layer board let's do that I'm seeing some power resistors over here you can see those two resistors and these diodes they have to be a rectifier I'm guessing these are all guys I'm not sure there it is that is how this thing goes let me take let's take a look at the number bloody hell they actually rubbed off the numbers there is no numbering at all on that thing but however I can make out an ST is that, a, is that an ST logo right there right there looks like an ST logo for me from the side see that that ST logo right there I don't know so whether is this a just is this just an operational amplifier or is this a microcontroller I really don't know okay there's a manufacturing date on this thing it's 4th of 2011 so it's six years old by now is this thing still works but unfortunately the plug socket that I'm having at the table right here will not be able to connect the power plugs like that it's not you know this these are known as power plugs and these are the standard the three pin plugs these are rated for higher amps and unfortunately at the moment I'm not having a power plug socket near my workbench so I cannot show it to you but even if I plug this in nothing will happen just the light will come on initially after the five second delay that's the only thing that's going to even if it's tripped eh, this light is going to come on that's how this thing worked back in those days so let's see there's nothing much to see over here so all these 4.4 volts terminals and the 12 volt lines are coming straight to the pair of diodes so yeah as we mentioned all these eight diodes are for the rectifiers so I'm guessing the 12 volt goes straight for the relay for controls and the 4.4 volts is used by the uh, IC and everything else in the circuit so since I'm not seeing any obvious circuit for measuring the AC from this side I'm, I'm thinking that they are actually relying on the transformer secondary voltage for that I mean correct me if I'm wrong I'm not I haven't yet you know uh, deciphered this thing there is no way I can do it without the without knowing the proper IC number or anything so I'm completely blind I'm completely blanked out for this particular thing I'm guessing that this thing is working on the base of the secondary voltage because if let's say if the input voltage goes beyond certain voltage that may uh, the secondary voltage of this particular transformer will increase or decrease according to the uh, uh, input voltage at this point right here so maybe based on how much voltage that goes up or how much voltage it drops down based on the input the comparator may be detecting that and then trigger in the relay so let's say if the voltage is above 170 volts as they mentioned over here instead of 4.4 it might produce like say 5 volts or 6 volts and if the voltage is below 170 volts this will be producing around 3 or 2 volts I don't know because I also I cannot test it because as I mentioned I'm, I'm running on a limited very limited budget I don't have a variac or anything here so if you, anybody of you want to support me I will provide the link the my PayPal link in the description you can support me and every single penny counts so with, you know without all those kind of test gears I'm not able to test things properly I'm not I'm not a uh, very uh, and you know uh, what I'm not very I don't I'm not having a very huge budget right here but anyways let's forget about that so I'm guessing that is how this thing works if the voltage goes above a certain point 
maybe they're using these as the dummy loads so to measure the voltage across that to trigger it if that is the case then there should be some reference voltage available for this thing so I'm not seeing any kind of uh, dedicated reference voltage reference sources or anything maybe as I mentioned if this is a microcontroller of any sort or if this is a dedicated chip for this particular function then it may have internal reference points to compare it against I don't really know and also I'm not going to reverse engineer this whole thing because at the moment I'm having so many other things lying around and also this thing let me see if I, if I ever reverse engineer one of these things if I ever reverse engineer this particular thing then I will make a follow-up video for this and I'll also link that in the description below but so for now I'm thinking that's it and th this is the LED connection going on here so based on the relay contact positioning they will be actually triggering those LEDs also okay there is a center diode right there oops there goes my camera and everything is kind of falling but yeah okay there is a center diode over there right there this has to be protection diode for the coils so that has to be the center diode maybe that is the reference point I don't know but anyways yeah thanks for watching this is it this is for now unfortunately without the proper tools I cannot go ahead anything beyond this point so yeah see you in another video